What is going on everyone? Andrew checking in for IDB. If you have been with this channel for a while, you know that I love smart home and home kit products. And one of the biggest problems that I've seen is no physical ways to control your home when you have a home kit setup. A lot of people use it through Siri and through their phones and through their voice, but not everyone has their phone. Not only has it with them all the time. Siri on the Apple Watch can be a bit hit or miss if you just wear your Apple Watch. And there's guests. How do they control devices? Well, enter devices like the Pop Switch, which is one of the first to hit the market that is a HomeKit capable switch that doesn't actually require any wiring know-how to install like the Eve or the Kugeek or the iDevices switch that we've looked at in the past. It consists of two parts, both a bridge and the actual physical button itself. The buttons can come in a couple different colors, though we are working with just the straight white model today. If you could not tell by all the sliding images of a, of a white button glossing across your screen. The button is very slim, very small, very stylish. I think it works well, especially in more modern style houses, just a really simplistic look. Unfortunately, it does require a bridge, but that's what allows the button to work without needing any extra power, like a wire or a battery. The bridge is very small as well. It fits pretty flush against the wall. It just has a home kit code printed on one side of it. There's really nothing else to it. There is actually kind of like a more or less a hidden button on the actual front of it that you can use when you need to pair additional buttons or reset it or anything like that. Other than that, it has the Logi, Logi, whatever you want to call it, logo along the front there. And that is pretty much it. There is a light that'll light up and let you know any statuses if you are trying to reset it or do something funky like that. But once I got mine set up and going, I never really had to worry about the bridge at all. To get it going, you literally plug it in, scan that HomeKit code once you see that that light is on, and you're all set. It'll show up inside of the HomeKit app once you've gone ahead and scanned it, and there'll technically be two parts. There's going to be the Logi bridge, which you can put in whatever you want. I kind of leave it in the default room to kind of hide it. And then of course you're going to have the Logi Pop white button number one unless you have more of them, but that's the name that it gave me when I first hooked it up. Now you'll have those two devices, one can be the bridge, one can be the button, and you don't really ever have to worry about the bridge, similar to the bridge that you use with the Philips Hue lights. As I select through all my rooms here, when we get to default room, you'll see we have those two devices added. So the default or the default room uh, white button, and then the actual bridge. So you don't need to leave them here. You can put that button into whatever room that you're going to be using it in. And you have a few other options to configure it as well, notably setting up what the button actually does. So first we're gonna go ahead and put it in the living room because that's where I usually am going to keep mine. Now I just need a few different options. You can configure three different functions for the pop button. One press, two presses, or a long press. So for me, I want that single press to turn on maybe all the living room lights. So I select all the lights that are in my living room tap next in that top right hand corner make sure they are all on everything looks good here and now you can go ahead and save in ios 11 you can also have a timer to turn off automatically so maybe i hit the button they turn on but they turn on off automatically after maybe an hour if you don't have a timer on them so in my case i don't they just go on and they stay on i want them to turn off when I hold the button down. So basically during the day, I come in, press the button, lights come on. Whenever I leave or I'm going upstairs or something, I just wanna hold it down and turn everything off. Since the living room is right next to the kitchen, I can set that double press to control the kitchen lights. So very similar thing. Tap all the kitchen lights and a single or double press will turn on all of the lights in the kitchen. So that is it, it is all set up, you are good to go. Now you can just immediately go and start using your button. Now, I did notice that there was a little bit of a lag sometimes, and I'm hoping that it gets fixed more with iOS 11 as they improve the relay speeds for any Bluetooth type accessories. Even though this connects to the bridge using RF, it does connect to other accessories that are Bluetooth enabled. Now, you can stick this on the wall. It comes with a little adhesive, nice safe adhesive to attach to your wall, but I kind of just like leaving it about, like throwing it on a table or something and just picking it up and moving it around with me. Of course, you do have to worry about some people losing it, like my girlfriend. I basically need to attach a tile on the back of this so that we can find the button so we can control the lights. Now, it's not just about lights. You can do full scenes with this. So in fact, after a little bit more tinkering, I've changed my setup a little bit. Now, a long press will basically get it everything ready for night. So I have the kitchen hue lights turn off. I have one of the lights in the living room go to a dark blue for at night. I have the thermostat adjust down a little bit for it during the nighttime. And I even have my August smart lock using HomeKit go ahead and lock itself. So when I go to bed, simply a long hold and everything shuts down 
all my lights, my wall switches, my outlets, my light bulbs, everything just turns off. I can very much vouch for the fact that my girlfriend does not like that she cannot use wall switches or any physical switches to turn off lights. She's not a fan of Siri all the time and sometimes just wants to hit a freaking switch. And that's what this allows her to do. Simply just pressing it or holding it allows her to turn lights on and off and she absolutely has loved it in the time that we've been testing it. One thing that is a little bit weird is that you have to make a choice between using HomeKit and all your HomeKit accessories or using the Logitech app and using it for any other accessories that use Google Home or integrate directly with that app. Personally, I try to keep most of my stuff inside of HomeKit and just makes it a lot easier to work with. You can, if you'd like, pick up more buttons. You're not limited to just one button per bridge. You can pick up several others to make it even easier and have others in multiple rooms of the house. So if you want to pick one up, you can find a link below in the description. Let us know your thoughts and any questions down in the comments. Otherwise, press that big red subscribe button. Go ahead and give us a thumbs up. And until next time, it is Andrew for IDB.